I'm going to show you how to enter the commands that will tell LaTeX to produce a neat and tidy version of this table that I've sketched over here on the right of the screen. We enter table contents, tabulated contents, with the tabular environment. Now an environment is the way that LaTeX knows what set of sets of typesetting rules it has to follow when it lays out the contents. So at the moment we're in the, the document environment and within the document environment LaTeX has rules to lay everything out in neat paragraphs, sentences and paragraphs. But we don't want that for a table. A table has very particular typesetting rules. So LaTeX has to change its typesetting rules. And we force LaTeX to change its typesetting rules by changing the environment. We start environments with backslash begin. And then we type in the environment name. And as I said, this is tabular environment. Now for most environments we'd now be finished and be ready to enter in the contents that we wanted typesetting by that particular set of rules. But for a table, LaTeX needs to know the arrangement of the columns before it can even begin to look at the contents of the table. So we have to tell it how many columns to arrange the contents into and how to align the text within the columns, either left, right or centred, and we have to tell it where to put the vertical lines. So that's what we're going to do now. The first thing I start with is to indicate that I need the vertical line that is on the left of the table, this vertical line here. So to indicate that, I use the bar on the keyboard, and that's immediately above the backslash. So we do um, shift, backslash, and a vertical bar will appear. That will make the left-hand boundary of the table be printed out by LaTeX. Now, that first column seems to be left aligned. The S and the P, the S of stamps and the P of paper, seem to be lined up. So I think that's a left alignment column, so I put an L. Then I have another vertical line. And then I want an alignment where the, the pennies line up with the um, tens of cents and the decimal point lines up and the dollars, single unit dollars line up, etc. To get that to, to work properly, to get monetary values lined up properly, we need to write a line. So I put a write. Then in this sketch, I say that I would like two lines uh, before the next column, and I can do that. I can, have any I can have as many vertical lines as I like. And then I have something that looks centered, as far as I can tell from this rough sketch, and no vertical line followed by another centered column and then the right hand edge of the of the table and now I'm finished writing out this extra command for tabular is very easy to do if you have a sketch and I strongly recommend that you do a rough sketch of your table first before you start entering the tabular environment all right so we're now ready to enter the first row of data and that's the headings and the first heading is account and that's the first cell in the first row I separate cells in rows with an appersand that's the symbol above the seven so I did shift seven then the next cell has the word amount in it and then I end that cell and then I have the word date then after that so I put an ampersand to separate them after that I have the word time and then it's the end of the row and I indicate end of row by two backslashes 
And that's the standard way in LaTeX to indicate you want to start a new line. That command, the double backslash, works in ordinary text. So if any place you want to break a line, it's just two backslashes. Um, I don't want this helpful reminder that Tech Studio gave me of where to enter the content, so I'm going to delete that. And then I'm going to enter in the next row. And the next row starts off with stamps. I hope you're seeing how easy this is when you have a sketch to read from or copy from. I need an appersand to separate the cells. And now I need a dollar. And normally that would be easy. I would just do Shift 4 and the dollar would appear. But that would confuse LaTeX because a single dollar is an instruction to, to LaTeX to go into um, mathematical text mode. But what we want LaTeX to do is to print the dollar sign. So if you ever want to have LaTeX print out something that it uses as a special symbol, then the way to do it is put a backslash first and then the symbol you want printed out. So that actually applies to the appersand. If you ever find that you want to print, have LaTeX print out the appersand, then you're going to have to enter it with backslash appersand, because otherwise uh, LaTeX reads that and expects there to be cells of a table row. All right. Going back to entering this particular table, we've done the dollar sign, or told LaTeX to print a dollar sign. Now I need to enter $4.75. And that's the end of that cell. Then I have the date, 3, 14, 15. And that's the date, then an appersand, 9 a.m. And that's the end of that row. Next row is paper. That's that cell done. I want a dollar sign, so I do backslash dollar, $39. Now this sketch would then have me producing blank lines. That might be what I want. I'm going to pretend it is, just to show you how to do a blank line, if you ever want a blank line. And that is you just put the appersands in the end of line. There are three appersands in each row, so I do one, two, three appersands. So that's indicating to LaTeX to do blank cells and then end the line. And it looks like I've got two of those according to this sketch, if I take the sketch literally. So I've got two, one, two, three appersands, end of line. And then that's it. Usually I'd have a closing horizontal line there, but there isn't one here. And in fact, I haven't given the commands for horizontal lines at all. So if I process these commands now, LaTeX would produce what I have on the right, but with no horizontal lines. Now that wouldn't be very attractive. So I'm going to put in the command now for the horizontal lines. And I often leave the horizontal lines to last. Some people like to write, uh, type them in as they're going. I just find it easier to do them at the end. I don't know why. Um, so now I've entered in the table. I'm going to do the horizontal lines. I need a horizontal line immediately before the headings. So I've moved the cursor up here in front of the, the headings row. I'm going to start a new line and type in hline. hline is the command that produces the horizontal line, as you can see from the helpful hint that uh, Tech Studio has, has sent on the screen for us. So that command print, uh, instructs LaTeX to draw a horizontal line. So it's going to draw a horizontal line before it does the headings. Now I want to tell LaTeX to draw a horizontal line in between the, the headings and the first true row of the table. So put a space here and type in H line. And from the sketch, those are the only two horizontal lines. So that's all I'm going to enter. So I'm ready to save my document. It up. The PDF LaTeX button is what I was looking for. Click that. 
and it should start processing. There it goes, and it's exited normally. So I haven't printed, I haven't entered anything in correctly. So I want to check that it that gives me the output I want. So I want the uh, PDF logo. Click on that, and there's my table.